Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Steel Workshop, where we are taking a look today at charging management. Particularly when making the move from petrol to battery powered tools, planning and organizing when and where you will charge is going to be an essential part of your work. So my name is Matt and I've got the pleasure today to ask Paul from Steel Product Management the questions to get the answers that you need on energy management. Great to be working with you again, sir. Thanks, Matt. I'm looking forward to talking all about the complex topic of battery management. Yes, indeed. It is rather complex or it can appear that at first glance. So uh, let's break it down. What are the fundamentals when we want to start thinking about our energy management? Well, when you move over to battery tools, you've got to think about how many batteries you need in the working day with your machinery to get the tasks done. Mm. Once you've considered that, you can then think about your opportunities to charge during the day. So are you charging on the work site or are you charging in your lunch breaks back at the workshop? In which case you want to charge faster to get the batteries charged up so you can continue your work in the afternoon. Sure. Or are you just charging back at the workshop at the end of a day where perhaps you can leave the batteries overnight charging that little bit slower? So you've got to consider those sorts of options when you have those opportunities to charge. Okay, so you mentioned workshop. Let's go there first. What are the options for charging in a workshop? Well, we have two chargers on the desk here. Mm -hmm. So the first is the AL301. With the AP300S battery, that takes 55 minutes to go from zero to 80% charge. Okay. And then 80 minutes to get to the 100% full charge. Okay. We also have the AL501 here, again with the AP300S battery. That takes 30 minutes to get to 80% charge, and then 45 minutes to get to a full 100% charge. But faster, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, certainly faster. Um, but why are we only charging 80% and then the rest? Why don't we just go straight to 100%? Well, that's for battery health. So charging fast up to 80% and then charging slowly for the remaining 20% just conserves battery health. So right. we're just making sure that that mechanism and the protection mechanism is in there to make sure the batteries last a long time and have a long working life for you. Got it. So it's got nothing to do with logistics or planning or anything. It's purely to look after the battery. Yep, purely to look after the battery. But actually, you can still get a lot done with 80% battery. So if you need that fast charge and then just get straight back out with the task at hand, you can do that as well. So it kind of works both ways. Lovely. OK, so that's for working with individual batteries. What if we scale it up and we've got multiple batteries on the go at the same time? Yep, well, we've certainly got a solution for that. I'll get the charger. Very nice. So this here is the AL301-4. As the name depicts, it's the same charging speed as the AL301 charger, right. but with dash four for four charging slots. Very nice. So you can charge four batteries, one after the other, at the same speed as you can with the AL301. And it's a perfect solution. So if you need to charge overnight, you can leave that on the wall or mount it on a table and pop your batteries in. And when you come to them in the morning, they'll of course be fully charged. Fantastic, but we're not charging them all at the same time. That's sequentially one battery after the other, right? Yeah, exactly that. Excellent solution, but I think you know what's coming next. Can we scale it again? I see something uh, over your shoulder here, which looks considerably bigger. Of course, can. let's go and look at it. So this is called the CR6 charging rack for six chargers. Makes sense. So you can mount six AL301 or 501 chargers to this charging rack. And that means really you're taking the chargers where they might be scattered across a, a desk area, puts them up on the wall for a space saving solution. Yeah, it's tidy, it's organized, as you say, save space, but you've got two of them on the go at the, at the same time. I have indeed. And these are all connected to our CM12. Right. So CM12 is our charging management solution nice. for up to 12 chargers. That means all you have to do is plug one single plug into your standard socket and it will charge all of those 12 chargers automatically. It does that in a really smart, clever way by monitoring and regulating the current available and delivering them to the 12 chargers, right. making sure that if there's not so much current available, that it distributes it to certain chargers. And as more current becomes available, it then gives it out to all of the chargers. Excellent. So you never get an overload or anything like that. It's, it has a smart system which works out where it passes the electricity. Exactly. There's no, uh, no electricians involved and a no sign-off process. You just plug it into the, to the wall and that system does it all for you. If there is a, a surge, then it manages that as well and makes sure that fuses don't blow in the actual chargers themselves. Very nice. What if I wanted to prioritise maybe one or two particular batteries? I know that I need these again in an hour or so and I 
I, when the system is doing its regulation, I want to make sure that they keep going. Of course, and you put your faster chargers on those ones, but we have one, two, and three priority slots with a sticker when it comes, so you can mark your chargers as priority one, two, and three, or whichever ones you, you, you want. And then to the system choose. will prioritize those ones if it needs yep. to. And direct the current to those three chargers, so they charge fast. Perhaps if that's the system you're using on your lunch breaks, you put your chargers there, so you can be ready to go as quickly as possible. Love it. And you said that you don't need electrician. You also don't need a high voltage connection. It's a standard plug, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a standard standard socket that you have in uh, in the respective country. So we thought it would be really interesting to ask Paul what the maximum number of batteries is that we can charge in one go. So, Paul, what is it? What's the magic number? Well, the number is 48. 48? Yes, yeah, so we've connected 12 AL301-4s into the CM12 system. So overnight, you can charge your 48 batteries and be ready to go in the morning. I like it. So if we put 48 batteries in this setup like this, how long would that take for them all to fully charge? Well, with AP300S batteries, that typically would take 12 hours. So you're ready to go. If you put them in at six at night from six o'clock in the morning, you're, uh, you're ready to hit the road. Okay, lovely. So those are the charging solutions in the workshop, but we've got teams out and about. They're going from location to location. Mm. Uh, talk to me about charging solutions mobile. So we have a CB1 charging box, charge box one. Nice. That can fit two AL301-4s, so up to eight batteries for secure transportation in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. That charge box can be mounted on top of a flatbed truck or underneath the flatbed truck, securely right. mounted on there as well and bolted in with um, mounting points already on the box. Nice. So it's all there for you. The box is of course lockable as you've got your batteries in there and it's IPX4 rated for water splashing from all areas. If it's going to be on top of a, a truck or underneath a truck, there will be water around the area. Could so be, yeah. it's uh, just making sure that that uh, investment in those batteries is protected. And, and they're safe from rattling around in the back of the truck or anything like that? Yeah, of course. With a moving vehicle, there are vibrations going around. So it is um, tested to make sure that it can withstand the vibrations that uh, that a vehicle would, would have when it's moving around. And of course, in the AL301, Dash four chargers, the batteries have clips on them, so they're clipped and securely mounted into those chargers, which are then securely bolted and mounted into the CB1 charge box too. So you mentioned that it can withstand vibrations on the back of a truck. Uh, knowing steel, you've probably got a test for that, right? Yeah, of course we do. So we've got this test here. So as you can see, the CB1 box is on a, a vibrating platform, simulating typical vehicle movement. Yeah. Of course, we combine that with real world testing and the simulations in the laboratory. So uh, it's certainly designed to be able to withstand the use that professionals will put it through. Lovely, thank you, sir. So that's charging in the workshop and charging on the go. Indeed. Okay, so we've seen uh, the solutions in the workshop and on the go, and now Paul's gonna tell us about the different carrying solutions. Yeah, of course. So first of all, we have our sustainer battery box. We've got a small, which I have here, plus a medium and a large box, depending on how many batteries you're trying to transport. Right. The small box here is designed to fit one charger and two batteries. But of course, you can take that insert out and put a different combination of batteries. And maybe you won't need to take the charger along with you. Mm -hmm. They are stackable. So I can take my medium box here, slide that there, and then lock that in place so I can transport oh, that's multiple boxes using the one handle. So I like really it. Really neat solution. There. Yeah, very clever, very clever. And what have we got then here? We have our, what we call our battery carrier. And this I, I wonder what it does, Paul. <laughs> well, it can carry six batteries Excellent. very easily in one. So you can just transport your batteries um, to the work site very simply from, uh, from your work truck. And here we've got a bag with uh, a strap and I've got some oil here as well. Yeah, so this is a combi carry bag. So it's designed to take a combination of items. So of course you need your batteries. You've got a space for four batteries in here, as well as the other items like your chain oil that you just spotted there. And then we've popped a spare chain, combi spanner, and then your two in one file holder to sharpen a chainsaw on the go. So plenty of options to carry your accessories and your batteries to your place of work. Okay, so we've seen the solutions in the workshop. We've talked about the charging opportunities when we're on the go, but sometimes we're so far away from power. You've got a solution for that as well, haven't you? Yeah, of course. We've got the PS3000 portable power bank. So it's got a really robust frame, 2000 watt hours of energy content in there. So that's enough to charge six AP500S batteries. We've got the uh, power point on the front as well as two other 
um, power plugs on there as well, so you can power different devices. Um, but if you want to charge on the go, it makes things really, really simple. Very We've nice. got a little video here of a, a worker using actually three PS3000s in their, uh, in their truck here, connected up to AL301-4, so they can charge multiple batteries uh, on the go and uh, get back to the job at hand nice and simply while the battery charges. Yeah, so very nice. So no matter how far away he is from infrastructure, he can keep recharging his batteries. Precisely that. Very nice indeed. Paul, it's been absolutely fascinating as ever today. Thank you very much for that little tour of the uh, charging management solutions. You're very welcome. And thanks to all of you for stopping by. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to ring the bell and subscribe. Then you'll know when the next Focus On episode is out. Maybe leave us a comment or two about what was of particular interest today. But until next time, from all of us here in the workshop, take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.